Hello everybody, this is Amanda and I'm one of Mrs. Hill's History Helpers. Today we will be reading Chapter 54, Up to the Mountain. Martin Luther King Jr. was preparing for the Poor People's Campaign in Washington when the garbage workers in Memphis, Tennessee went on strike. They needed help and King, and King agreed to lead a march on their behalf. That march had hardly begun. King was in the front row. When teenagers at the back of the line began smashing windows and looting stores, King was furious. I will never lead a violent march, he said. Call it off. A staff member urged the marchers to turn around and return to the church where they had begun. Dr. King left, but the police and the rock-throwing youths weren't finished. By the time they were, 155 stores were damaged, 60 people were hurt, and a 16-year-old boy had been killed by police gunfire. It was the first time that anyone had been killed in a march led by Martin Luther King, Jr. He felt sick that a boy had died. He was horrified by the violence, but he couldn't step aside. King decided that he had to lead a peaceful march in Memphis. Some of Dr. King's aides thought Memphis was too dangerous. J. Edgar Hoover, the head of the FBI, the country's federal law enforcement agency, hated Dr. King. He was using illegal methods to tap King's phone, and he was starting rumors and planting false articles in newspapers. Later, the truth came out about Hoover, but right now Dr. King was receiving death threats in the mail. That didn't stop him. He was going to go back to Memphis. The night before his trip, King turned on the television. President Johnson was making an announcement. First, Johnson said that he was cutting back on the bombing of North Vietnam and would try to get a settlement of the war. That was a surprise and a relief. Then Lyndon Johnson stunned the nation. I shall not seek and I will not accept the nomination of my party for a second term as your president, he said. The big man who wanted to be the greatest of all presidents, who wanted to end poverty, who wanted to do his best for America, had failed. A few days later, in Memphis, Dr. King spoke before a huge crowd at a church rally. He didn't have a written speech. He just spoke from his heart. King said, only when it is dark enough can you see the stars. Those who heard him that day would always remember his next words. I would like to live a long life, but I'm not concerned about that now. I just want to do God's will, and he's allowed me to go up to the mountain, and I've looked over, and I've seen the promised land, and I may, and I may not get there with you. But I want you to know tonight that we as a people will get to the promised land, I have a dream this afternoon that the brotherhood of man will become a reality. The next evening, after making plans for the Memphis March, Martin Luther King Jr. went out onto the balcony of his room at the Lorraine Motel to breathe some fresh air before dinner. His friend, Ralph Abernathy, heard something that sounded like a firecracker, but it was no firecracker. Martin Luther King Jr., had been shot dead. Robert Kennedy heard the news in Indianapolis just before he was to speak to a black crowd in a troubled section of the city. The people on the street had not heard the awful news. Cancel the talk, the mayor of Indianapolis urged. The police refused to protect the senator, but Kennedy would not leave. He climbed onto the flat back of a truck under some oak trees and told the crowd of the tragedy in Memphis. Then he said, Martin Luther King dedicated his life to love and to justice for his fellow human beings, and he died because of that effort. In this difficult day, in this difficult time for the United, the United States, it is perhaps well to ask what kind of a nation we are and what direction we want to move in. For those of you who are black, considering the evidence there evidently is that there were white people who were responsible, you can be filled with bitterness, with hatred, and a desire for revenge. We can move in that direction as a country. 
black people amongst black, white people amongst white, filled with hatred toward one another. Or we can make an effort, as Martin Luther King did, to understand and to comprehend, and to replace that violence, that stain of bloodshed that has spread across our land, with an effort to understand, with compassion and love. He told his listeners that he understood their anguish because he had lost a brother to an assassin's bullet. What we need is the United States. What we need in the United States is not division. What we need in the United States is not hatred. What we need in the United States is not violence or lawlessness, but love and wisdom and compassion toward one another and a feeling of justice towards those who still suffer within our country, whether they be white or they be black. The vast majority of white people and the vast majority of black people in this country want to live together, want to improve the quality of our life, and want justice for all human beings who abide in our land.